Vigilante episode 8 starts with Kamoke's secretary informing him that Mirayo has been missing for a few days. The scene cuts to Mr. Bang torturing Mirayo by slowly pulling her nails out. Thankfully, our red-haired girl is willing to endure pain and refuses to sell out the vigilante. She honestly doesn't know who he is. She only knows that Kamoke is involved with him. After visiting Mirayo's house and ascertaining she is missing, Kamoke calls Ji Yong and informs him. Ji Yong is not surprised as he had seen it coming. He asks Kamoke to set their plan in motion and leaves the university, skipping class. What is Ji Yong's plan? First, Kamoke helps Ji Yong attack Samdu's men while moving their remaining cash. Ji Yong then makes one of the men tell Samdu to bring Mirayo to the World Cup Stadium Concert Hall by 7 p.m. the next day. Ji Yong promises to exchange the stolen crypto wallet for Mirayo. He cautions to show up or fish for the crypto wallet at the bottom of the Han River. He is aware that Samdu doesn't have Mirayo, but Ji Yong is counting on him to get Mr. Bang to show up at the meeting point with the journalist. As expected, Mr. Bang agrees to show up because his ego won't let him accept that he already lost once to the vigilante and feels the need to avenge himself. On the other hand, Samsu rounds up all his men and prepares them for the big showdown the next day. He is sure that someone, either Mr. Bang or the vigilante, will come for his throat and wants to secure all his bases. Speaking of securing bases, Kam Ok and Ji Yong meet to update each other on the plan. Sien Wook witnesses this meeting since he has been trailing Ji Yong. Sien Wook tries to talk to his friend, asking him to stop before it is too late. However, Sien Wook doesn't precisely mention he knows what Ji Yong has been up to. He only chastises him for missing classes to meet with Kam Ok. What happens to Cho Hien? After meeting with Ji Yong, Cho Hien visits John Gill's memorial. He then goes to check up on his hostages. He feeds them in exchange for more information. What happens at the World Cup Stadium Concert Hall? Samdu and his men are the first to arrive at the World Cup Stadium Concert Hall. They quickly take over the security room and start manning the CCTV for the building. On the other hand, Mr. Bang and his henchmen prepare Mirayo to make the exchange. Ji Yong and Kamoke take advantage of the vigilante's popularity and plan a concert simultaneously with the exchange. They sneak in among the hundreds of partygoers dressed as vigilante. Using the party as a cover, Ji Yong manages to get Mirayo away from Mr. Bang's henchmen. However, Mr. Bang watches and follows Ji Yong and Mirai outside along with his man. Meanwhile, Kam Ok distracts Sam Du and his men, leading them outside the venue. As Mr. Bang and his man close in on Ji Yong, he gives Mirayo his phone and asks her to record the fight. The fight intensifies as Mr. Bang and his man come for Ji Yong. Concurrently, Kam Ok and Sam Du's men approach the area and continue to fight. Cho Hien sees Mirayo's life and brings his two hostages to help him join the fight. Things continue to get hectic, and Mirayo's life is threatened over and over again. Ji Yong does his best to save her and is surprised when someone else dressed as the vigilante steps in. Sadly, the man is stabbed in his stomach by Sam Du while trying to save Ji Yong. It is then that the man's identity is revealed to be Sien Wook. Ji Yong is shuddered after seeing this, but Sien Wook insists he came of his own volition and believes in what his friend is doing. Ji Yong begs Mirayo to rush him to the hospital just as the police arrive to manage the chaos. At the same time, Mr. Bang sees Sam Du running away, and he starts chasing him. Ji Yong soon follows suit and leaves behind Cho Hien, fighting. With Mr. Bang's henchmen taken down, Mr. Bang can only depend on himself. Elsewhere, Chief J. Hyub learns of the crazy fight downtown while having lunch with Sun Chul. He promises Sun Chul will handle the matter once and for all and rushes to the scene. Back to Ji Yong, he catches up with Sam Du and gives him a good beating before Mr. Bang appears on the scene. He is closely followed by Cho Hien, 
and another intriguing fight scene starts. Ironically, Cho Hyun says he is there to arrest them. As they fight, Jae Hyun arrives and locks them in the underground tunnel. He shoots Sam Du to death before proceeding to open the water supply in an attempt to drown the three remaining men. Thankfully, Cho Hyun and Ji Yong work together to tackle Chief Jae Hyeb. However, Cho Hyun stops Ji Yong from killing the man with his bare hands. Cho Hyun still believes the law will properly punish Chief Jae Hyeb, a.k.a. Vol. He wants a chance to prove his law to Ji Yong. As they talk, Mr. Bang attacks and stabs Ji Yong in his right arm. Meanwhile, Chief J. Hyeb grabs his fallen gun and shoots Mr. Bang. He also shoots Ji Yong and Cho Hyun. However, Cho Hyun approaches once Chief J. Hyeb runs out of bullets and kills him. Ji Yong wakes up and sees Mr. Bang, who is also conscious and trying to attack Cho Hyun. The two struggle, and Mr. Bang is killed before Ji Yong passes out. What happens to Sien Wook? Sadly, Sien Wook doesn't make it. Ji Yong has a hard time after losing Sien Wook, who was posthumously declared the vigilante following his death. We learn that this was Cho Hien's plan, and he asked Mirayo to help execute it. Mirayo worries that Ji Yong will never accept it, and Cho Hien promises to help the young man find his calling. Later, through a conversation with Cho Hien, we learn Mirayo's dad died after being wrongfully accused of a crime. No one came out to help, even when they knew the truth. This is what drove Mirayo to support the vigilante. He gave her hope that someone could rise and defend the weak. However, as she watches Ji Yong warn his friend, she is not sure if he is up to being the vigilante anymore. What happens after the showdown? Sung Chul moves quickly to save the police's reputation. He listens in on Mirayo's interview, where she still sides with the vigilante. He is keen to see if Mirayo knows more about his involvement in this scandal. He already had his men seize everything she had on the vigilante. With no choice, the police release Mirayo, but Sung Chul promises to fix the police reputation, which continues to take a hit after Chief J. Hyeb is revealed to be a criminal. What happens to Kang Ok? After the showdown, his secretary takes him home for treatment and lies to his shareholders that he got into an accident. Kang Ok wakes up and realizes that Sian Wook was named the vigilante. He remains hopeful that his work with Ji Yong will continue. We then learn that he has been working with Ji Yong because he wants to bring the chairman of his company down. How does vigilante end? Ji Yong is pissed when he sees Chung Ho defend Chief J. Hyeb and posthumously promote him. During his school graduation, Ji Yong refuses to take the solemn oath as a police officer to protect and uphold the law. The episode review. The ending of the show was nothing if not anticlimactic. The only time things got exciting was during the showdown at the stadium. Vigilante failed to live up to the pace it started with. Even in the finale, it felt like most characters were not fleshed out to the best of their abilities. The writers missed the chance to add more depth to the supporting characters, and the twist with Sian Wook felt rushed and a weak ploy. The show wasted a lot of good supporting characters, ultimately weakening the story. As expected, Ji Yong's fight continues. Refusing to take the oath with the other students shows that he doesn't believe in the law. He is still stunned and peeved about Chief J. Hyeb's posthumous promotion. Rightfully so, Ji Yong nearly died bringing the truth out, and it takes Sun Chul one press briefing to undo everything. Lastly, we need to know more about Cho Hien and his motivations. What did he mean when he said he could help Ji Yong, and what happens next? Hopefully, we will get a season 2 and see who the vigilante is going after next.